1437. Standing here and right beside me is the mosque of Ashraf Bars Bay. Talk to us a little bit about it. The complex of Al Ashraf Bars Bay is a hidden gem in Islamic Cairo. It is right in the heart of medieval Cairo, in the middle of El Moraiz Street, almost halfway between the southern gates, Al Zuela, and the northern gates, Bab al Futuh and Bab al Nasr. So we're talking here about very central location in historic Cairo surrounded with the Great Cairo Market and shops of all kind around us and it is almost a hidden gem so we will explore so much inside it but it is a beautiful mameluk piece of art and it is a compact complex with number of buildings all together on one piece of land. Let's just talk a little bit about the complex. Uh, as I can see, it, it is multifunction, so it has a lot of multifunctions in it. So let's just talk about it a little bit about that. The Mameluk arc, generally speaking, has got certain features that almost exist in every monument we have in Cairo. They all have mosques, uh, small school for orphan children of the city. They all have meditation rooms, uh, Sufi areas, uh, teaching classrooms, and so on. So on a small piece of land, they tried their best to put all these buildings together. And, and the facade of the structure uh, looks wider than it actually it is. From inside, it's much smaller. But this due to the fact that most of the Mameluk monuments in Cairo, and Ashraf Barisbay in particular, is built on what it used to be the remains of the Fatimid palaces. So right here where we are, we are in what used to be called the Western Gardens of the Fatimid palace. And this is no longer exist. The Mameluks in the 1420s, they came and they started to buy those lands and design their new projects. They give so much efforts and so much money to be able to build this great complex. It was built over a long period of time during the time of Al Ashraf Barisbay, and they actually serve praying during the mosque as it's still under construction. It means they did not wait till they finished the whole building and then serve. No, actually, once they finished this wall behind us and the great praying area with the Qibla of Mecca, they start to serve praying while the construction of the rest of the building still moving on. complex was founded by Malik Ashraf Bars Bey, who began its construction in 1424. It is one of the three mosques still existing and built by him.
sitting here in the uh, right above me is the mosque and we we saw the mosque a uh, feature of it and uh, right next to me is Mr. Ahmed Abu Layla who talked to us a little bit more about it but first of all I want to ask you let's talk about the uh, King Ashraf Bars Bay he's an interesting man who came to Egypt as a slave serving Sultan Baruch who actually ruled a few years between 1382-1384. But Sultan Barkuk invited so many slaves, Turkmen, warriors, boys and girls, to serve in Cairo. And Ashraf Bres Bey used to be one of his very close servants. Towards the age 21-22, he set him free. And he joined the army, started to live in the citadel with his garrisons and his troops and then become very deeply involved in the political unrise that took Cairo between 1385-86 till 1420. We have 35 years of restless changes. Uh, Mameluk sultans fighting one another, generals fighting one another and there is changes all the time. After Barkuk, his son ruled Farag for a few years. Then a number of other generals and Mamluk leaders ruled after Al Muayyad Sheikh and many others. Then it came to Barisbai. He is the most strongest person, the opportunity to gain power and to mount the throne. So he became the Sultan around 1421-22. He immediately start controlling the country, changes tax laws, and make some reforms, and in the same time, put so much effort on regional stability. Trade was everything for the Mamelukes. So the key to anyone's success at that time, how to attract more business to Egypt, and how to secure trade roads. And that's why he had to take his army over the desert of Arabia. He had to take his army to Syria a number of times. And he clashed with the Syrians a number of times. But the most important thing he did in his life is invading Cyprus. Ashraf Bres Bey invaded the island Cyprus twice. The Turkish side and the Greek side. Larnaca and Limassol. And during these two expeditions, the island was completely occupied and the Mamluks controlled the eastern Mediterranean. Not only this, Ganos, the king of Cyprus, was taken as a hostage, a prisoner of war. And he was brought all the way back to Cairo. And he was in prison in the citadel for almost one year. With intervention of the Venetian kings, very close friends to the Mamluks, in trade, they managed to ransom the king and set him free. And that's why the glory of Ashraf Brisbane, it was an economical power and economical strength. And that's why he was able to buy this piece of land. 1760, 1760 square meters. It's a small piece of land. Used to be the garden of the Fatimid palaces. Then he hired the architect to make the complex. The elements, as we see it from outside, the beautiful dome above the tomb, we see it from inside. The beautiful minaret was restored by the Egyptian government in the 1940s. One thing most people do not know when they come to this area. The minaret was destroyed in the Ottoman period, and Abdurrahman Kathoda restored the mosque, painted the building from outside, which gave it the stripes red and white, and restored the minaret and make it almost like an Ottoman in shape. But the Egyptian government in the 1940s restored the minaret one more time and make it to look like Mameluk in shape. One important element also is the entrance where we are with the beautiful marble work, with the beautiful stalactites and the red and the white and the black marble. This is all typical Mameluk in style and the door as well is a typical Mameluk. All the calligraphy and the carvings around us is a typical Mameluk quotations from the Quran and religious verses. 
we have the water house right on the main street to serve the people of Cairo. Drinking for free was a cherry. Right above the water house, we have a small one classroom school. But that school only served the orphans of Cairo. So the orphans of Cairo who doesn't have a place to go or doesn't have a, any support, they come here and the charity that support this orphanage give them education and food and sometimes pocket money to start living. Oh, it's for free, correct? And it's all for free. It's part of the charity. So this was very common in, in Mamelodi period. Some people at that time, they built hospitals next to the buildings. Others built dormitories for people visiting from outside the town. All these mosques are masterpieces of architecture and decoration. Marble, carving, especially in the mausoleum, which attained a very high standard skill. 